These phones don't make no sense. I was recording my video and it just cut off on me. I was recording my video and it just cut off on me. But the point of this video was to let you know that even though the Lord may have promised you something and you don't see it yet, that doesn't mean it's not going to happen. We think about David. David was anointed to be king when he was a young boy, about 15 or something, however old he was, back in Samuel. I think 1 Samuel or something like that. Samuel, God sent Samuel to anoint David to be king. Saul was king. Saul displeased God. He was rebellious. He didn't do what he was supposed to do. The Lord says, I'm remove, removing myself from you. You will no longer be anointed to be king. He sent Samuel to anoint David to be king. David was anointed to be, to be king when he was a young boy, 15, 16, however old he was. I don't know. He was out in the pasture taking care of the sheep or something. Um, even though he had been anointed to be king at that age, he didn't become king, I think, until he was like 30. Um, he was still working in his father's, taking care of the sheep. He went and defeated Goliath. He was a uh, right hand of Saul. He was serving Saul and all this stuff. Um, but yeah, he had already been anointed by God, by Samuel, uh, to be king, right? So I was reading in here and I was thinking about the scriptures I shared with you all earlier about how Elijah, the prophet, went to God and saying, Lord, I'm over this. You know, they didn't killed all your people, your prophets. These people ain't keeping your covenants. They just wilding out. Um, I'm over it. Just let me die. I just want to come and be with you. Let me die. So, um, the Lord, Elijah sat under a tree. This is all in first Kings 19. He sat under a tree, fell asleep. The Lord sent the angel to feed him. Elijah got up. He ate, he drank, he fell back to sleep. The angel came back again, fed him some more. He said, you got to be eat. So you can got to eat so you can be strong for this journey. Cause you about to go on this 40 day journey to the mountain of God, which is Mount Sinai. Elijah got to the mountain. The Lord said, Elijah, why are you here? And then he goes on to tell him, you know, like the same thing I told you. The prophets killed. They trying to kill me. You know, these people rebellious. They ain't listening to you. They serving these false gods. They doing all this. They wilding out. Lord, I'm over it. Take me. Um, so the Lord sent him to anoint some people and do some things. But he sent him to anoint Jehu to be king of Israel. This was in 1 Kings 19. At this time, Ahab is king of Israel. King Ahab was married to Jezebel. Y'all know I heard Jezebel. If you don't know nothing else, you've heard about Jezebel. He was married to Jezebel, the old evil, wicked, conniving, manipulating woman. Um, so he sent Elijah to anoint Jehu to be king of Israel, right? But at the time... Ahab is king of Israel, and Ahab was evil. It said Ahab was the worst king. He did everything that God said was wrong. He was he displeased God the most. So I'm flipping through here like, okay, well, when is Jehu going to be king? Because you sent Elijah back in 1 Kings 19 to anoint him to be king. But King Ahab is king. After King Ahab died, then his son Ahaziah became king of Israel. And I'm on into 2 Kings now, right? I'm in 2 Kings and... I'm still looking to see who's going to be king of Israel. And let's see. Let's see. Let me, I think. Hold on. I don't miss none. I'm trying to give y'all the Cliff, Cliff Notes version. But you got to read it for yourself. Um, Elijah died. No, he didn't die. Elijah went up to heaven. The Lord ended up taking Elisha up to heaven. But he, uh, Elijah with a J E L I J A H. He took Elijah up to heaven. But before he took Elijah to heaven, he anointed Elisha, E L I S H A, to be the prophet in his place. So that all that happened. Now I'm into. I'm in the Second Kings now. Let me see. I saw it in here somewhere. Second Kings nine. Jehu is chosen to be king. Elijah anointed Jehu to be king when God told him back in 1 Kings 19. I'm in 2 Kings 9. Now Eli, I mean, excuse me, now Jehu is about to be anointed to be king again. So 2 Kings 9, Jehu was chosen king. At that time, Elisha, so this is the new prophet that took the place of Elijah. Elisha, the prophet, called a man from the groups of prophets. Elisha said, get ready and take this small bottle of olive oil in your hand. Go to Ramah in Gilead. When you arrive 
Find Jehu, son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi. Go in and make Jehu get up from among his brothers and take him to an inner room. Then take the bottle and pour oil on Jehu's head and say, This is what the Lord says. I have appointed you king over Israel. Then open the door and run away. Don't wait. And there's some more in here. But just know, Elijah anointed Back in 1 Kings 19, y'all, Elijah anointed Jehu to be um, poured oil on Jehu to make him king of Israel. But he wasn't appointed king until way, I don't know how many, I don't know years and stuff in the Bible. I just know my scriptures. He didn't, he didn't become appointed to be king until 2 Kings. And so we already seen that it was Ahab. And then from Ahab, it was uh, Ahaziah. And there might have been some more kings in the place before even Jehu was put in his rightful place for to be where God has a, uh, had anointed and appointed him to be. I'm just sharing all this to say, if God has promised you something, if God has spoken a promise to you, but you don't see it, and we know hope deferred makes the heart sick, if you don't see it, that's somewhere in the Proverbs too, Google it, it'll take you right there, and you don't see it to still stand firm on the promises that God has promised you, that God has told you, because we saw that David um, was anointed to be king. While Saul was still king, but he didn't become king until I think he was in his early 30s, something like that. And I got it written, but I ain't going to hold y'all up looking for it. Even think back into Genesis when Joseph had a dream that he was his brothers were bowing down to him. He had this dream when he was a young boy and his brothers were jealous of him and they sold him off into slavery. He ended up going to working for Pharaoh and all this other stuff. But then Joseph became high and powerful in Pharaoh's kingdom. And saved all the people. And so even though Joseph had that dream as a young boy and he went through this years of life, <laughs> you got to read it. He was thrown in jail because the king's wife wanted to sleep with him, but he didn't want to sleep with her. And she lied. And so they threw him in jail and he was in jail and he just went through all this stuff just because... It all started with his brothers being jealous of him because he told them this dream that the Lord had given them. And they already knew he was his father's favorite anyway. Um, but Joseph had this dream when he was a young boy of his father and his brothers and, um, you know, his family bowing down to him. And sure enough, it came to pass years later as he's like second in command in, in Pharaoh's kingdom. Uh, David anointed to be king. At a young age, he ended up even working for Saul, serving Saul, being in Saul's um, kingdom, so to speak, learning, learning what to do and, and being in the presence of that. Even though he had been anointed to be king, he wasn't king yet. And it was going to be years before he was appointed, should I say. We saw that happen. And then we just saw here, too, how Jehu was anointed by Elijah to be king. But it took time for him to get into that place. To be king, it wasn't his time yet. And when it was time, then God sent someone to appoint him to be king at the right time. So that was a whole lot. If you stick through the video this long, God bless you. But I just want to encourage you to wait on God, regardless to what it looks like, to seek him, to be encouraged, to um, to read your Bible, because these stories in here be good. Um, and get you a Bible that you can understand. This Bible I've had for a long time is a New Century version. The Bible I ordered for Jay is a New Living Translation. I like the New Living Translation. I think it's very um, understandable where it makes sense. And then you also have the Holy Spirit to help you to um, give you revelation of the Bible and the Word and what God is saying in His Word to you at that time. So that's it. Wait on the Lord. Like um, Fred Hammond say in his song, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall walk and not faint. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall something like that. I don't remember it all, but y'all know what I'm talking about. I got to go for a meeting, y'all. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.